Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Etho, and right now I am trying to decide if I want to build a tree farm, one of these mangrove tree farms, to uh, start off the episode. Now, well, I, I know I want to actually. <laughs> I, I don't know how to build one, I guess I should say. Grow a couple of these trees and just see what happens. And they take quite a bit of oatmeal. They do. Yeah, that's the th other thing, too. They kind of just, they make a big mess, don't they? <laughs> it's like, now I can't get to uh, get over here too well, can I? Um, and yeah, all these saplings got destroyed over here. Hmm. All right, we ended up with something that looks like this. What do we do with this? This is like really wild. Yeah, these trees, they really branch out too, don't they? I don't think that's a problem, though. It's just, it's just kind of annoying. <laughs> There'll always be some wood left over, I think. I want to test this out again, except this time we're going to try growing them underwater and see if that protects the saplings from getting destroyed, like when when the trees grow. Because the roots tend to destroy the propagules. No, it did. It, it destroyed it over here. Oh man, I hate to do it. Oh, it's going to be such a mess to clean up. But I want to see how well this uh, tree does in this, tr this tree farm that we use for the spruce trees and the dark oaks. So... We're just gonna go for it, and hopefully it doesn't blow up, as as we usually do. So there's gonna be some logs in the middle, it looks like. Okay, but basically we we chop out a, a tunnel in the middle. Okay, here we go. Although I just realized the problem, I think it's gonna blow up the dirt. Yeah, not too badly. Though. <laughs> it's because there's no logs at the bottom. So, usually the logs shield the dirt from getting blown up, and uh, since they're not there, this all kind of got messed up. It did a fairly good job, didn't it? How much did we get? Yeah, we got two stacks. Uh, basically, we're going to take this tree farm and build it again. <laughs> Except uh, this, the new one's going to be dedicated to the mangrove trees because it leaves a giant mess all around the sides, and then there's a ton of roots in the way. So if I ever go from growing mangrove trees to spruce trees, or the dark oaks, uh, all that junk's gonna be in the way, and I'm not gonna want to do it, right? So I either gotta do like giant batches of this stuff, or, you know, I think long term, I think it's best just to set up a second tree farm dedicated to the mangroves. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build it right over here, and I have actually built this tree farm several times now, so I can, I know I can build it in about an hour or so, maybe two. <clears throat> yeah, it uh, took three hours, like I said. Uh, um, you know how it goes. <laughs> You know, I never factor in resource gathering time, and then there's just a bunch of running around that needs to be done always. Alright. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't really blow up the roots. Okay. Hmm. So if we don't do all the TNT, then it doesn't really get much of the roots down here, and then the, the logs kind of sit up above. That, maybe we gotta use full TNT then. So usually as I plant these, I, I remove some of the roots, and maybe the trick is don't remove the roots, leave some covering the mud so it doesn't get blown up. Okay, let's see how it does this time. We're blowing up the bottom this time. The, no, it's still got the mud, really. We had that totally covered with roots. So the thing I'm kind of struggling with here is with these tree farms, they're somewhat programmable. Like you have six dispensers on the way up with TNT in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And depending on if you put TNT in, like the bottom one here, it'll blow up the roots. If if there's none in there, then it won't blow up the roots, won't blow up the dirt, so everything's fine, right? Except then it leaves a bunch of roots. The logs land on top of those, and then when the second one comes down, it blows up all the logs that are sitting on top of the roots. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm having a, a bit of a, a trouble here. I, I did not put any uh, TNT in the top one because these trees are a bit shorter than spruce trees. So you can save on TNT that way, right? So that's that's what's cool about having like several of these tree farms set up. You can be a little bit more specific when you're when you're blowing up the trees. So I think what I'm gonna do here is put a little reminder for myself. Etho shield the mud. <laughs> So I don't forget next time I use this. And instead of putting all the propagules on the pad to begin with, we just do it one by one. I put the propagules in my offhand, bone meal in the main hand. This doesn't work perfectly either though, because I tend to always uh, place an extra propagule after it grows. So it's a, a little bit annoying. 
Also, the roots sometimes do that to you. <laughs> so these trees are just, they're, they're a challenge. And then this sign is gonna remind me to do this extra step. Basically, this isn't ideal, but it's what I'm gonna have to do, I think, <laughs> is uh, just bust out the middle and put some logs down as a shield for the mud and for the hoppers and all that stuff. Probably just in the middle will work, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll test it again. Okay, the mud survived. The mud survived, everybody. <laughs> Look at that. Did the carpet survive? Carpet survived too, I think. Excellent, okay. Yeah, so if we just do that extra step, everything's fine. So normally this guy doesn't bother me because I don't see him. He's kind of hidden behind some mountains and stuff, right? And so if you don't see him, he doesn't exist. But today, I'm really seeing him a lot. This is the example of like, what's really bad about having an old world like mine. Like there's some projects that are just so bad, they actually make the, the world worse than if you hadn't done them, right? <laughs> this was supposed to be like something that led to the dragon egg and uh, not only is it unfinished and ugly but it's also broken there's supposed to be a redstone gadget that works here all right well it was a bit of a hard call to know what to do with this thing it's a bit goofy right i don't really want to tear it out either though because then you lose the history of the world if you do that so it's like well it can't stay the way it is either so i, I just gave it a quick little update here i don't really want to spend a lot of time on it um, but we got a couple cool new features. For example, we got a uh, uh, sensor over here, a skulk sensor, so it detects whenever we're moving nearby. And then it activates a shrieker to give it that ominous sound, right? Like the, the dragon screeching at you. And then these heads also start biting, chomping down at you. <laughs> and uh, the fade lighting is working now, so it, it fades in and out kind of randomly. Let's head into the nether here for a little bit. So this week I spent a bit of time working on a new nether tunnel. I went and uh, gathered a whole bunch of ice for it and then uh, traded in whatever gold we had to the, the piglins for some black stone and got to work building the new tunnel. Let's go take a look. So it's down this way. This is the path that has our dual blaze farm, wither skeleton farm, goon farm, gas blaster. Um, I guess I gotta add a new thing. It also goes out to the swamp now that we found last episode. The mangrove swamp. So just over there is the blaze farm. We go a little bit further here. We got Mr. Froggy from Castle Crashers. And then left there is to the goon farm and stuff. And this is all the new tunnel over here. Um, it's very important I keep up with these tunnels. Like keep adding to them. So that's like if I need to travel to new, new terrain, it's not a big hassle. And I, I dread doing it. Kind of ran out of blackstone, by the way. <laughs> I traded in all my gold. I did never get enough gold in this series, it feels like. But uh, yeah, that nether tunnel takes us out to over here, the mangrove swamp we found last episode. So now if I need to transport frogs or I guess you can just farm tadpoles. Man, that whole that whole tunnel's for nothing, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's uh, it's good because if I need to um, like collect mud or something, it's, it's easy to get here now. There's horses here if I want to find some new horses. Just having new terrain is nice. Rabbits. That's not a rabbit, that's a frog. I knew that. I'm looking for frogs, but I keep finding all these cool caves, like underwater caves. I love the new terrain generation. It's just so cool. <laughs> like, look at this. Got a deep hole that goes all the way down to deep slate in the swamp here. We got like rings to swim through and uh, another ring over here. And then look how deep the water goes too. Like this is the mangrove swamp. I was not expecting it to go so far down. And, okay, so they bred. Kind of thought they'd go straight to the water, but I, I'm not sure how it works. I've actually seen, like, no videos of this. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, tadpole. <laughs> nice. So then I, I think we can scoop these up, right? No! <laughs> I killed them. Did that destroy it? Yeah. Darn it. Oh, we got it. Okay, let's try this again. Is it... You don't silk touch them, right? I thought you could scoop them. Or, or no, I think they have to hatch first, right? They have to hatch, then you can scoop them up. Maybe. Let's see if we can silk touch them. Nope. Okay, yeah, you really gotta... Oh, that was cool. Okay, they did it. Alright, we got some eggs. I'm not gonna touch those ones. Did they... 
Oh no, they hatched instantly. I thought a frog jumped on them and killed them. <laughs> I was about to rage. Get over here. Now oh, check this out. Right by the mangrove, there is a pillager outpost too. Can we get an allay? That would be cool. Oh, I think all the cages are empty. That's, this is where you get the LAs. They're in these cages usually. <laughs> he's trapped in there. <laughs> he's the he's the black sheep of the group. They don't like him. Oh yeah, by the way, I came across a really weird bug when I was building the tunnel here. I was like chiseling away the netherrack and the baby piglin came and stole it from me. He, somehow he picked up the netherrack and then went crazy. And to be honest, I've started to find a few bugs with 1.19. Uh, I'm in 1.19.1, actually, and uh, there's an issue with wither skeletons that's really annoying me. I'm hoping it's a bug and not a change, but normally I have lava flowing down to turn the, the farm on and off, and you can see they're still spawning even though the light levels should be high enough to prevent them from spawning on those pads, so yeah, that kind of stinks. And I came across another problem here with our squid farm. Which was a bit unexpected. So, like, Mojang makes a lot of little secret changes behind the scenes that you never really hear about or know about. <laughs> and one of them is, uh, like, the minecarts don't pick up the squid anymore when they when they fall on their heads like they used to. Don't know when that changed, but I just noticed it uh, the other day. So this farm needs to be redone. But uh, anyways, we ended up getting a few tadpoles to, to grow into frogs here. And... Uh, I found out a couple tricks. I've been experimenting with the frog mechanics a bit. This is like a combo trick I want to show you. So it is, first of all, possible to grow tadpoles in the, the nether. Normally, if you let them go and you try to feed them slime balls, they'll die before they grow up into frogs. Uh, but the other th trick I'm trying to show you with this is you can also keep track of their growth cycle in the bucket. So I'm feeding them slime balls to speed up his growth. And then you can juggle them in a new water bucket. So this is, it didn't reset his growth cycle. It's, it keeps track of it in the bucket there. So now when I release them again, I'm going to feed them some more. I don't know how many you're supposed to feed them, to be honest. I didn't figure that out yet. <laughs> but I'm just using this as kind of a, a timer. Figure out uh, how many I need to give them. Right? So after I feed him the full stack, this guy is ready to turn into a frog. So if I let him go... Um, He'll turn into a frog before he dies. Or else I'm going to look like a fool. There we go. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to prep our tadpoles here and get them ready to turn into frogs. Because I think we might try to get a frog light farm going on. Okay, so we're going to build our frog light farm. We got our tadpoles prepped and ready to go here. We got blocks ready to go. And I just realized I got like a ton of stuff I need to explain for this to make sense. So <laughs> let's get started. I'm going to pillar up as, as I talk here. So, as many of you know, there's three different types of frogs in the game now. And depending on what biome the tadpoles grow up in affects what color they're going to be. So, depending on if it's if they grow up in a hot biome, a cold one, or a medium temperature biome will change the color. And then a frog needs to eat a magma cube to create a frog light. And the frog light will be the color of the frog that uh, ejects it. So, where do we get magma cubes? Well, oh, I went too high. <laughs> you can get it from like a, a bastion magma cube spawner is a good place but also just going to a basalt delta is, is also good which is where we are right now and we got to watch out for gas because the gas are going to want to spawn maybe around 200 is good i don't know um i'm actually going to put down glass just so nothing spawns right now now in my world as you know uh I gotta go pretty far for stuff usually, except I found something interesting here. <laughs> so, at one point in the series, I flew all around my nether a thousand blocks out, but apparently I missed the spot right over here. That is only about uh, four or five hundred blocks away from zero zero. There's a couple chunks of basalt delta that we can take advantage of close to home. I don't have to travel far to get to here. I'm gonna get rid of the pillar. 
Pew, 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 pew. And the other thing is, this farm would work a lot better if I built it closer to bedrock and then AFK'd in the sky. Uh, just the way spawning works in this game. But I'm trying to make a YouTube series here. <laughs> and uh, I want to be able to see our farms working, right? So that's why I'm building it up in the sky here. So we can actually stand here and see it working. Uh, even though the rates will be a little bit lower. Uh, with the frog lights, I'm, I'm guessing we'll get way more than we ever need anyway. Uh, let's go see where this takes us. Oh dear. I don't have a shield. <laughs> what are you trying to do to me? Yeah, look at this. This is perfect. So I found a spot with a little bit of snow. I guess there's more over there too. But yeah, there's a tiny little bit of snow over here. And then all around us is kind of like medium temperature biome. And then the nether is going to be our hot biome. So I want to get the portal like right over here. And hopefully it'll link up with that one on our platform. Then we grow the frogs here, push them through the portal onto our platform. Easy peasy. We're going to have like a little frog sanctuary over here too. I think we can get some uh, powdered snow here, which is perfect. <laughs> this really worked out. Yeah, we got linked up over here. Cool. Double check. And if it works, I think we're ready to start building. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So this should be fairly simple. We're kind of just building this on the fly here and hopefully it'll work. But I don't think we need a very big platform. Uh, I noticed like Basalt Deltas is here and then when we flip to the next chunk it goes to Nether Waste. And I scanned kind of the edges of the, the border here and there's a bit of biome blending going on I think. So we're going to just like stay like two blocks away from the, the chunk borders and just kind of go into four chunks. And white terracotta is kind of my go-to for like building stuff in the nether. I like it because it's gas proof and it's sort of a, a brighter block, but also a bit red. So it will look good with like magma cubes and most things in the nether. Yeah, so we got to fill all this in with white terracotta and I'm adding a border of nether brick around the outside here just so it looks a little bit different. And also there's going to be glass above this to sort of cage in the magma cubes because they like to jump off the edge here. They don't take fall damage, so if they land on the, the bedrock down there, they'll never die, and then the farm will stop working. Okay, so I kind of made a little bit of a mistake. I did not bring enough white terracotta with me to finish the platform, so I'm going to have to go leave and get more, and when I come back, everything's going to start spawning. So I'm trying to sort of gas-proof things a bit before I take off here and get the glass up. So gas need a four-block high space to spawn, so we're only giving them three block space here. That's all the magma cubes need. Excellent. All right, check it out. We got the platform all built and caged in and the magma cubes are spawning pretty good when we're when we're far away from it. I built a little uh, observatory platform behind me there. Um, now we're ready to move on to the next stages here. So we're in the basalt deltas and the only thing that can spawn here, I believe, is gas and magma cubes. We don't give them enough space on the platform there to spawn gas and nothing spawns on top of glass. So all we're getting is magma cubes, which is great. Next step here might be to introduce the frogs. Now I hate to say it, but we probably don't have enough time to finish this whole thing today. I'm already uh, at my limits here. So let's just double check this works that uh, we can get the proper frogs here. And then uh, off camera between next episode, I'll breed up a bunch of frogs and get them introduced into there. Add all the powdered snow, probably a collection system. Okay, so that's an orange frog. Very good. So that's the like the medium temperature biomes. This is a cold biome over here, so I believe he's the green one, right? Get that guy over there. Now, I've already fed these guys slime balls, so that's why they're converting. You need a little nudge? There you go. We got him. We got him. Okay, n there we go. <laughs> so this is cool. We got like all three biomes together here. We get all the all the frogs. Um, is dangerous for me in here? Oh, it's already starting to happen. But basically, we'll add a bunch of frogs. Three is not going to be enough for this whole farm, obviously. I got to get like probably 50 or something. Let's just double check the white frog works. Please don't die. There we go. <laughs> and he should start eating the slimes. There we go. We're getting the frog lights. Cool, cool. I'm going to block this off so they can't go back in. This is actually very dangerous here. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit cornered. Uh, I like this spot over here. 
So the other thing we gotta do is put down powdered snow. So every every two blocks we basically need some powdered snow to kill the slimes. They do not like this stuff. Alright, let's double check that works. We got a medium slime here. He should be just barely touching it. And he died and split into the babies. Good stuff. Okay. <laughs> so somehow I need uh, several hundred uh, buckets of powdered snow to fill this all up. Yeah, they're doing work. Look at this. Look at this. Oh dear. Loud noises. <laughs> yeah, this farm's gonna be insane when it's done. But uh, yeah, like I said everybody, that's gonna have to wait until the next episode because right now it is time for the comment of the day. And I like this comment because it really got me thinking about things a bit. It says, Etho, your intros used to be so unique, but now you've got a what's up guys formula every time and it sounds kind of cringe. All of them used to be different and quirky and unpredictable. Be creative with it again. I know you can because you're different than every other YouTuber on this site. Thanks anyways for all the videos. You're still my favorite creator 100%. So, <laughs> oh, this, this is an interesting one. So I thought about it for a bit and it's like, I'm kind of at the place now where if I have an idea for an intro that I think is good, I'll do it. Or if it's, if I think it'll be entertaining, sure. Uh, I try to avoid getting too quirky these days. I don't know. <laughs> Like, you think about, like, the, the general spaz stuff I used to do a long, long time ago. Uh, I did a lot of that stuff with, like, it in mind that a lot of kids were watching me. Like, that's not, like, something I probably would do otherwise. <laughs> and now I'm trying to be a little bit more true to myself, right? I find that stuff kind of cringe myself. Um, so if I can come up with an intro that's not too cringy, I'll do it. Um, I don't think the What's Up Guys is cringy. Um, I think that's a matter of taste. I have a feeling a lot of younger people like a little bit more action and older people might like a what's up guys, you know? You know, just a quick little greeting to start the end the episode. Otherwise it's a a bit jarring, a bit uh too in your face, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like a a quick little hello when when I watch a video. Um but uh that might be just me. I don't know. So I kind of do a little bit of both. Uh-huh. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Until the next one, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.